Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the real United States and welcome to my kitchen. Now, there is not really much which is uniquely American cuisine. So if you had high hopes that this episode was going to be about something that is uniquely American cuisine, I hate to disappoint you, but it's not going to be. In fact, I'm going to do something that is uniquely Asian cuisine and predominantly in China, although this is also prepared in uh, Vietnam and Japan and Cambodia, um, Korea, along the Pacific Rim in Asia. And I'm going to do something that I don't normally do before we start. Before we begin, I am going to give a warning. So, warning everyone, we are preparing an unusual commodity here, an unusual dish that is a black chicken and it still has the head on it. So if you uh, have small children in the room that are squeamish or you perhaps behave like a small person and are squeamish, turn it off now because I'm not going to sugarcoat this, but I personally think this is a, a very, very exotic dish. So without further ado, now we will go on and show you our black chickens. Now I bought these at the Asian grocer because again I said this is a predominantly an Asian dish but so much of cuisine in the United States here is brought with all of us who came from other parts of the world. So this and this are in fact black chickens. Now that is their natural color this particular chicken is uh, undoubtedly a silky. Silkies are a very small breed of chicken, very fluffy feathers. They have feathers down their legs and onto their feet. Uh, also widely known for having a condition called polydactyl, where they have more than the normal number of digits on each foot. Uh, silkies will often have at least four or five digits instead of the normal three on each foot. There's another species, a larger species of chicken that does have black skin, black flesh, black bones. Uh, these are supposed to be black all the way through. I haven't had silky before, but this is something I've been wanting to try for a long time again. And so we're going we're gonna to share that with you. I'm going to stew one and I'm going to roast the other just so we can kind of see what the, the resultant difference is. And uh, now these were $6.78 a pound. They're a you know, for chicken here in the United States, that's that's expensive. Uh, chicken here, you know, usually a dollar and a half, two dollars a pound, maybe. Um, sometimes less, sometimes more, depending on you know what you buy. But uh, this obviously a, a comparatively expensive type of chicken to buy, and uh, but it came from a specialty store, an Asian market, over in Fairfax, and so. And they're very small. That's why there's two of them. It says, I don't think there's going to be a great deal of meat on either one of these. Uh, I'm trying to see the weight on here. But, the, well, this one was exactly a pound. So, looks like they're both just about exactly one pound. So, very, very small for a chicken. So, I'm going to go ahead and start opening this one up. This is, uh, and again, I, I warned you folks, these have the heads on them. So if that's the sort of thing that makes you squeamish, run for cover. And you can see that it is a very petite chicken. There's the head. Now I know here in the West that uh, people don't like the head still on their chicken, duck, turkey, or fish, that sort of thing. Uh, personally, I think it gives a lot of charm to the dish. I guess to each his own. And I'm going to stew this in a cast iron pot. And to that I am going to add some stewing fluid, just some water. And a couple of cubes of vegetable bouillon, some onion, some small potatoes, garlic powder, onion powder, a little bit of seasoning. A 
<laughs> Not going to completely submerge it, but I'm going to fill it up about halfway around the bird. This is a, a vegetable bouillon. I suppose you could use pretty much anything you want to give it some flavor, but... Now, I know that the question I'm going to get asked repeatedly, even though I'm telling you now, oh my God, Paul, what does black chicken taste like? I actually hate to have to say this. It tastes like chicken. So there you go. Turn that on high to get it going. Clean up my area a little bit. I got some special small potatoes. They're red potatoes, purple potatoes, and white potatoes. Just thought it would be it's something special because we're cooking an exotic dish. Not going to put a lot of them in there. Four of the reds, four of the whites, two of the purples. Okay, get those in there. And I've got an onion that I'm going to just coarsely chop. For those of you that are interested, that is not a cleaver. Cleavers, uh, we usually have a hole in them. They're much thicker, much heavier. That is a Chinese chef's knife. I've had that for many years. Something I'm very comfortable with in my hand. Again, I'm not going to be real fussy about this. This is mostly for flavoring. So we got potatoes, onions. Some garlic powder. And I don't need to put the onion powder in because I already put some onion in. And then I'll just add a little salt and pepper and that will be good to go. We'll give you a little look inside of the pan there. So that's our black chicken with some various colored potatoes, some onion, and a little garlic powder. Okay, now the other bird I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dry roast instead of cooking in fluid and stewing. I'm going to roast the other one. Eventually we're going to transfer both of these into the oven to, to finish. I'm going to roast this one in the oven. Once I get this one done, we're going to transfer them both into the oven. So. Other black chicken. Now in some parts of Asia, I understand these are used, these are cooked for medicinal reasons. It's supposed to be good for curing colds and stuff. I don't know if it's true. I don't have a cold right now. But uh, it's a very small bird. It's a very, I don't know, it's a very deep color. I will tell you that. So for, when I roast a chicken, typically I don't put uh, fresh onion on it, I'll put onion powder on it. But what I do use is uh, cardamom, it's a very potent herb so you don't use very much of it, and some fresh rosemary, Bev and I always grow rosemary every year so we have this, well mostly this is what we use it for is roasting poultry. But I really like these two together on roasted poultry. So now, better open this first. Again, you're not going to use terrible much of this. Maybe a quarter teaspoon. Yeah, that's a quarter teaspoon. <laughs> and I'm going to put this down inside of the cavity of the bird. 
Now, incidentally, the feet are still on the animal as well. This is a very, very aromatic herb. I'll shake it around in there a little bit, if it will. Okay. Cute little feet. And does it have more digits? Yes, you can see that it does, in fact, have five. And it's actually got a sixth toe sticking off of this one. So this is what I was talking about, where the birds actually have polydactyl. Now I'm going to put my fresh rosemary in there, and I think I've got more than what I really need. I'll probably just put, I don't know, three small sprigs of fresh rosemary in there. I don't think I'll even tear this up, because again, it's an aromatic, and it's going to give off its oils and aromas. Now this one I will use onion powder, some garlic powder, I've already got the cardamom and the rosemary in there, a little black pepper. And a touch of salt. Now what I am going to do, is I'm going to add potatoes to this one as well. We'll just roast those right in there. Love these little purple potatoes. That ought to do it. So then I'm going to preheat the oven. Actually, I'm going to have Bev preheat the oven because this thing is a little squirrely. And we'll stick both of these in the oven. And we'll come back in a little while and show you how they turned out. Okay, now while I'm waiting for my chicken to cook, I, this really doesn't have anything to do with the black chicken, but this is a dish that I do make from time to time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make brandied pears. So we're going to have that for, for dessert. And in this case, since we're making an Asian dish, I'm, I'm using Asian pears, which come in these cute little styrofoam stockings. These are kind of smallish ones, but they were inexpensive, $1.25 uh, a pound. So we decided to get those. They were what was available. And uh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cut these in half, I'm going to core them, and then I'm going to put them in a saucepan with a mixture of water, sugar, and brandy. And what I'll be using for that um, is what I've got on hand that I bought last time I did this. <clears throat> this is Curvazier Gold, and this is Curvazier Rosé. It's a, it's a brandy. You can use any brandy. Um, commonly I use uh, Rhinol, it's a French brandy. About half water, half brandy. If you run low, a little more water and a cup of sugar and that'll get you going. So I won't uh, bore you with the coring of the, the pears and I'll show you when I get this put together. Okay, so I got my Asian pears halved and cored. A couple of them I had to cut into quarters just to get them to fit down in the pan nicely. But that's six Asian pears. That's way more than what we'll eat tonight, but since I'm making them, I'll go ahead and make a full batch. And I've got a cup of sugar. Which is, uh, seems like a lot, I suppose, but it's not. I'm not going to measure out the brandy because I know about what I've got. And I'm going to just use up what I've got. Normally I would measure this, so I had about equal parts of brandy and equal parts of water. 
but I'm kind of cleaning up right now. I also wouldn't use two different brandies, but And I'm going to just put some water on there. Plop that on the stove. Put the spurs to it. Put a lid on it. We're going to just stew that now until they're fork tender and they're done. I might give them a little stir a little bit later on, but that's about it. And voila, brandied pears. So we'll be back with our black chicken in just a little bit. Now to go along with our black chicken and potatoes, we're gonna have some green beans and some yellow beans. Now Bev bought the yellow beans yesterday at the Asian market, but we have green beans growing here on our patio garden. And they're in season right now, so she's going to go ahead and she's going to pick out, pick the beans. This also, I'll just pan over here real quick while she's doing that, is where our herbs are. So we have, this is where our fresh rosemary came from. Pretty hot out there today. How's the beans doing, dear? Beans are doing great, and they got blossoms on them, so they're still going to be producing. This is wonderful. I didn't know how well they would grow in this tub that I found, but they're doing really good for being stuffed in a little tiny tub. There's another big one down in there, I see. Right here, yeah. Yep. This is, I think, three or four pickings I've gotten. So that's pretty good for just having them grow in a little tub on the patio. So there's our beans, guys. Okay, we've had our uh, black chickens in now for about 30 minutes. Roughly, I think, half the time, certainly, that the dry roasted one is going to need. We've opened that up so you can get a look at that. And then here is the one in the stew. And you see that's cooking somewhat faster. Uh, things with fluid in them, higher density, they're going to cook faster than air, which is a much lower density. So now the beans that Bev put, picked the green beans and the yellow beans that she bought we're going to go ahead and we're going to toss those in around here okay spread them around all right yes and uh i don't want to touch that cast iron pan because i'm sure that is hot this will give us a, another vegetable adds some nice color to the dish So there's our green and yellow beans. You got to be real careful and remember to put one of these on so you don't grab anything that's hot. So I'll cover that back up, <coughs> keep the moisture in there, and we'll fire those back in the oven probably for another half an hour. Although this one is going to take a little longer than the one with the fluid on it. I probably should have put these both on in advance. But if I'm real careful, I won't hurt myself. And we'll just keep cooking them and testing them until they're done. Our pears, incidentally, are stewed pears, doing nicely. Not quite cooked yet. Because they should be tender enough so that for that knife just slides right in and they're still hard. And we'll be back 
as we progress. Okay, so after another half hour, about an hour total, both of our black chickens are cooked. This is our stewed one, and this is our dry roasted one. And you can see they really haven't changed appearance much. You know, unlike uh, other meats that are, you know, that are lighter colored, they're gonna darken somewhat when you're roasting them. These are already dark, so they're not gonna darken. But they are, we checked them, they are, they are done. The potatoes are done, the onions, the beans, everything's done. I took the stewing fluid from this one and threw a cup full of uh, Israeli couscous in that. Cooked that up just uh, for an additional side dish so we didn't waste the stewing fluid because it had some really nice flavor to it. There's our Asian pears that have been brandied and they came out nice and fork tender. Everything came out just about right at the same time. Now, the catch here is, is how to dissect these in a way that's, uh, that's presentable for the camera. Something that I probably should have considered before I sat down here in front of the camera. But I'm going to try and cut some of this little devil off here. And I'm going to feed it to Bev and if she lives then, then I'll try some. Oh yay. <laughs> I don't know quite how I'm going to attack this. But, um, and they're still quite hot because they just came out from cooking. So I'm going to try and sort of split this down the breast without destroying it. You can see it is, it's so done it's, it's coming right off the bone. Bring that out. And it ain't gonna be, <laughs> well yeah, the, like I say, stewing tends to make this very, Here. very tender. I'd like to show this to the camera. All right. Now you can see the meat here is quite dark. It's not as black as the Indonesian chicken, but it is a very dark colored flesh. Okay. Yes. And I will remove the head and neck. Maybe we can find some use for that in another dish. Did you get enough out of that there? Or? Yes. Well, I'm gonna just grab this thing, what's left here, of the stewed one. Now, when I took uh, psychology all back during the Lincoln administration, one of the things that we learned was that about 90% of people, at least here in the United States, are color sensitive about their food. And the experiment that was run was that uh, they took top chefs from uh, around the world and had them cook a banquet for 100 people. But they colored all of the food in odd colors. The meat black, uh, potatoes, maybe green uh, things. So they weren't the color that people were expecting them to be. About 50% of the guests at this banquet refused to eat. Of the remaining 50 that ate, I think something like 40 five of them became ill, even though there was nothing wrong with the food. It worked on them psychologically so bad that they became ill, and, or that they, they reported that it tasted bad. Only about 5% of the participants ate the food, said it was delicious, and had no problems with it. So again, for most people, this is not going to be something that appeals to them, because, because we are innately color sensitive about food. Uh, Beverly and I don't happen to have that that sort of thing going on. We, uh, we aren't real color sensitive about food. So let's uh, dig in and see if what I told you was true, that it tastes like chicken. Bon appetito. Thank you. Oh my God. Wow, is that good? <laughs> oh my God. That is delicious, folks. That is, that is truly very delicious. Mm. Not to brag on my own cooking, but that is, that is really good. Mm -hmm. Very, it came out very tender, the, the stewing process. And, uh, you know, I, I will grant you, for those of you that are color sensitive, that you, you, you've got to concentrate and go, yeah, it's supposed to look like that. The skin is, is very, very delicate on this particular type of chicken. 
Some chickens have a very, you know, a very tough or, or thick skin. Yes, yeah, this not is tough. yeah, this is almost falling apart if you touch it. You got to be very careful; the skin will fall apart. Oh, yummy chicken wings! Lordy, lordy, I will definitely do this again. Probably not on camera, but we would definitely do this again. Yeah, those are good. And, uh, I don't know what it looks like with us eating black chicken. For those of you that are color sensitive, I'm sorry, but just know that it tastes really, really good. Yeah, that has probably got to look really icky to watch. Um, or the little feet on there, too. <laughs> um, but that is, that is, I got to tell you, that, folks, that is truly a delicious dish. It, uh, I mean, it just tastes like chicken, but we did a nice job of seasoning it with the the bouillon and the garlic and the onion and those sorts of things. Well, I am yeah. not displeased. So I'm I'm going to assume that the uh, the roasted one uh, probably maybe not quite as falling apart, but is going to taste like a normal roast chicken the way I always roast chicken. And the potatoes taste like potatoes, and couscous tastes like couscous. But I just wanted to share this with you. Again, there uh, here in the United States, there is a very eclectic cuisine. Um, that's all. what the leg looks like without the bone in it. I just took the bone out. So the meat is quite dark, but it's very flavorful. It's very good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this is coming from the girl that didn't really care that much for the chitlins, so, um, which is a very American cuisine. <laughs> anyway. I tried them, though. She did. You saw that. If you saw that episode, you know she tried those. So anyway, folks, I, I, I hope you've enjoyed at least uh, seeing us dive headlong into this exotic Asian dish and that you maybe have learned something and that there is no particular, there are some dishes like the chitlins that are very American, but so many of the dishes here in the United States were brought with our ancestors. Uh, you know, our ancestors came from Northern Europe. Many people's ancestors came from Asia, uh, the, you know, the Middle East, you know, the, the, the Israeli couscous. There is just about every kind of food here in the United States that you could possibly imagine, and it's all good. <laughs> so we'd like to thank you for joining us here on The Real United States. I hope you've enjoyed this kind of, <clears throat> I don't know, bizarre episode on black chicken. If you've got questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. We love hearing from all of you. I try to get back to everybody I can. And as always, thank you for watching.